In the first part of this lecture, we briefly discuss mathematical number systems. In mathematics, we have five number systems. Uh, and these are the natural numbers, the integral numbers, or simply integers, which followed by rational numbers, real numbers, and finally, on the top of the hierarchy, complex numbers. Uh, these classes of numbers, they have symbolic notations, and uh, here they are. The natural numbers, we use this letter N for that, Z for integers, Q for rationals, R for reals, and C for complex. Uh, like I said before, natural numbers is the smallest class of numbers, and Complex numbers is the largest class of numbers we deal in in mathematics. Uh, symbolically, this this relation between the these five classes of numbers it is expressed like this, and you read this this little symbol. It creates subset of so the whole line is read like this and is a subset of Z, Z is a subset of Q, Q is a subset of R, and R in its turn is a subset of C. That's a standard mathematical notation for the subset, we will use it very often, so please remember it. Uh, another note on notations and abbreviations if you see anywhere in these lectures, in this one or subsequent lectures, notation like this, Z, which is followed by this interesting symbol, and then the class of numbers, or a number system symbol, this simply reads as Z is a complex number. Similarly, a writing like this reads like X is a real number, and there's another, another example I'll give you Y belongs we read this as belongs, we read the symbol belongs. Y belongs Q is just simply Y is a rational number, which we all know is that Y is given as a fraction, M over N, where M is an integer and N is a positive integer. You can of course continue this line of abbreviations, but I think that's enough systems. All right. One of the reasons why we have so many number systems is, of course, historical, and uh, it was inspired by people's attempt to solve different equations. For instance, let's just start with a, simplest, with a simple equation like this, x take 2 equals 0. We all know the solution to this equation is x equal 2, and even, you take, even if you take the smallest number class, the oldest, number class in existence, you immediately realize we do have a solution within this class. However, if you change your equation a little bit, and you take, take if you go for the equation x plus 2 equals 0, your number class n fails you right away. And that was the reason why people introduced the z class. Because within the z class, the solution to this one is negative 2, you do have a solution. I think you get the idea what's happening here if you take the equation like this. 2x take 1 equals 0, we all know the solution is 1 half, and within, within the z-class you, you could not possibly find a solution to this equation, and that's why, that's why people introduced a wider class of numbers later on, after z, the rationals, within, the, within which you do have solution to this equation. As long as the people move to move away from linear equations to the algebraic ones, they will re they realize that even, even rationals are not enough in order to have the solutions to to these algebraic equations, even this, this simple quadratic equation, which we all know, which we all know has plus minus root two solutions, it doesn't have any of those within within the Q set. You have to move on to the R set, and that then and then you will have the solution. Finally, time has come for people to realize that the Solution to the x plus x squared plus one equals zero equation is is not a member of the real numbers, and that's when the complex numbers came in. 
since this last discovery, people try to find whether there are any equations for which there is no solutions within the complex class. But it turns out the complex numbers are such, such a universal, such a big set that every possible algebraic equation has a solution within this C class. This is the this is what is called the fundamental theorem of the algebra. We will discuss this theorem a bit later, but that's, I think, a good place to mention that first time. Of course, if I want to finish this table, I have to put yes and no in these parts of my table, because obviously if this equation has solution in all of these classes, and this one has in all of these classes, and the same story about the bottom part of this table. 